Greetings, Field of Dreams fans, and welcome to another episode of the Dream Nation Show. I'm your host, Roman Weinberg, Director of Operations for the Field of Dreams movie site, and welcome to the show. We have a jam-packed show here. First, I gotta say, it's a beautiful day here at the Field of Dreams. Every day is beautiful here in heaven, and we hope that you can visit us for yourselves this year during our 30th anniversary year. It's incredible to think it's been 30 years already, but is definitely going to be a jam-packed season for us. We have a lot of great events, which I will touch on at the end of the show. But first, we have an exciting guest on today's show, the voice of the Iowa Hawkeyes and over 40 years of sports broadcasting experience, Gary Dolphin, a personal friend of mine, great guy, I can attest to that. And we're excited to have him as part of our 30th anniversary celebration on June 15th, Father's Day weekend, he will be announcing the game under the lights between the iconic ghost players and the Iowa Dream Team filled with celebrities with Iowa roots like Adam Holuska, Mike Boddicker, Dallas Clark, Greg Bruner, Jeff Horner, and so many others. We are blessed to have this terrific lineup of Iowa celebrities and Iowa sports stars. It's sure to be a fun day. So without further ado, let's dive right into my interview with Gary Dolphin. Gary, good morning, and thanks for being on the show with us here this morning. You bet, Roman. Good to be with you. Finally, uh, we're getting close to more, uh, or getting acclimated to baseball weather. At least the temperature's warming up. We need some drying weather, though, don't we? Oh, definitely. Hopefully that sun will come out before we know it, and uh, we'll be playing baseball out here at the field, counting days down to our 30th anniversary celebration and looking forward to it. And uh, you're going to be part of the day, so we're uh, excited to have you on board. Looking forward to it. Uh, I've been asked uh, any a number of times over the years to come out and partake in the uh, annual celebration and with uh, typically it was in September when football uh, Iowa football was going on and always had to politely beg off but uh, uh, I'm excited about the event uh, Father's Day weekend uh, it should be really exciting and I think it speaks volumes to what the field means to not only Dubuque County and, and the state of Iowa but around the country uh, I look for great crowds yeah it's you know this movie definitely continues to resonate and the big part of that is uh, future generations, you know, the next generations are watching the movie, so that definitely helps. But for those that don't know about you and, and your career and what you've done, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Certainly. I've been the uh, the radio voice uh, of the Hawkeye Radio Network for uh, going on 23 years now. Um, probably covered Iowa football and basketball uh, and the university for the better part of my career, which spans uh, roughly, I think I'm in my 40, 47th year. Uh, grew up in this uh, part of the state, eastern Iowa. Uh, attended school in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Uh, done thousands of high school football and basketball and softball and baseball games. Uh, five years of uh, five to six years, as I remember, of minor league uh, baseball play by play. That's frankly how I got interested in this vocation. Was uh, my parents gave me a, a little spin dial RCA transistor radio for Christmas one year when I was, I think, eight years old, and uh, I'd lay in uh, lay in my bunk bed every night spinning that dial. I'd land on. Uh, the Detroit Tigers, uh, Ernie Harwell or Jack Buck in uh, St. Louis or uh, Brickhouse with the Cubs and Bob Elson with the White Sox, Merle Harmon with the Minnesota Twins, on and on and on. Um, uh, these great 50,000-watt radio stations in uh, Detroit and Chicago and Minneapolis, etc., St. Louis, KMOX, uh, and, and just fell in love not only with baseball, but fell in love with uh, radio. And I knew from a, an early age that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a Major League Baseball broadcaster. And although that never worked out for me, uh, it, it certainly has turned in a, a good direction for me. I did Northwestern for six years, worked for the Chicago Bears, mainly in production uh, for 10 years uh, in Chicago. And then 1997, got the call from the University of Iowa to uh, come be their their new voice, which I was only too happy uh, to do growing up in Iowa. Every kid, uh, you know, if they're not a Hawkeye fan, uh, most of them are. Uh, and uh, who wouldn't want to be the next voice of the Hawkeyes? So I'll, I'll do it for a few more years, and then somebody else like yourself will step into that chair. 
<laughs> yeah, well, we're certainly grateful for all the years uh, that you have broadcasted plenty of great Iowa football games and basketball games. Are there any particular seasons or any memories throughout your career with the University of Iowa that stick out in your head? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, there's there's a lot of them. I mean, it's hard to narrow it to one or two, but sure. uh, you know, I tell people uh, my first year of covering Iowa football, uh, the Hawkeyes were 0 and 11. That was, I think, in 1972 or three. Uh, and then when Hayden Fry came, of course, it all changed in the late 70s. And in 2015, the Hawkeyes went 12-0 and and went to the Rose Bowl and to the Big Ten uh, Championship or the Big Ten title game in Indianapolis. So I really kind of come full circle uh, from 0-11 to 12-0. and It took 40-some years to get there. But, uh, you know, there's so many great memories. Uh, the Capital One Bowl ending in 2005-06 uh, season drew Tate to Warren Holloway on the last play of the game when the Hawkeyes beat the defending national champion LSU Tigers uh, at the Capital One Bowl in Orlando. That that certainly sticks out. Uh, Ricky Stanzi's pass on fourth and goal from the seven with no timeouts and a couple seconds remaining in the game at Michigan State. Iowa needed a touchdown. They were down five points. And uh, Stanley or Stanzi drilled a pass to Marvin McNutt on the goal line uh, Saturday night uh, ambush in East Lansing, and the Hawkeyes escaped a great Michigan State team. Uh, 15-13. Certainly the Rose Bowl, even though uh, Stanford handled the Hawkeyes that day, it was a great experience. I've always wanted to call a Rose Bowl game, and, and now my, my bucket list includes calling a Rose Bowl victory. So hopefully the Hawkeyes get back there. Uh, you know, basketball, when you have 35 games a year, uh, Roman, uh, on average, it's it's hard to, to you know go back That's through 22 point. years. But I, I would tell you right at the near the top of the list would be my uh, – second year of doing the games, which was Dr. Tom Davis last year's head coach, and we went into Kansas, uh, the Hawkeyes did, and down, I think, 16 or 18 points early in the second half, roared back to win that game at uh, the uh, famous uh, Allen Fieldhouse, which I'd never been into, uh, uh, or let alone called a game, and, and what a thrill it was just to be in that environment. Roy Williams had a, another great Kansas team, and the Hawkeyes pulled it out, won it by three or four points. And in so doing, ended uh, a 68-game home win streak by the Jayhawks. Uh, that that has to be at the top of my list in terms of highlights uh, from the basketball season. You know, I've been to, uh, I don't know, seven, eight NCAA tournaments. The Hawkeyes got to the NIT championship game against a great Baylor team in 2013. So I've had many great memories. I suppose when I write my book, uh, it'll all be in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be on the lookout for that. Yeah, you've okay. seen it all. And, uh, you know, in terms of memories, uh, you were in Dubuque in the area uh, in at the time that uh, the filming was going on for the Field of Dreams. And can you tell us a little bit about what the buzz was like in the area when they were filming and, and uh, any particular memories stick out? Did you interact with any of the cast members? Absolutely. Uh, and, you, you know, I've got to go back uh, 10 years from the filming uh, of, of Field of Dreams when I was working at KDTH Radio in Dubuque. I had a morning talk show, and uh, the, the, uh, the movie Fist was being filmed uh, in Dubuque uh, because of the, uh, the 1930s and 40s look that uh, Dubuque gave uh, 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 production site uh, officials because uh, there wasn't a house. If there were, there were very few of them that had a TV antenna on the rooftop because of the terrain. Uh, Dubuque was one of the pilot cities for cable TV. Uh, I don't know how many people know that. Uh, and so it, it looked very 1930-ish with the old, uh, the old buildings. Uh, and therefore, the uh, producers of Fist uh, fell in love with the city of Dubuque. And that was my really my first interaction with movie stars, Sylvester Stallone, and uh, uh, there, there were, I mean, a real long list of tremendous uh, stars, Rod Steiger, uh, and and uh, on and on and on, and uh, it, it was just a real thrill to not only interview a few of those folks, but get to know them. They were all uh, uh, housed uh, in town, uh, primarily at the, at the Hotel Julian, as I remember. And so I, I would visit some of the scene shots uh, down in what is now the Millwork District when they were filming the famous fight where Sly Stallone, uh, they're all got the sticks, they're banging on the cobblestone streets, yep. and they're about to engage uh, uh, the, the Union uh, thugs. And uh, it was just a, gr a great thrill to be a part of that, or at least watch it. And obviously many extras were hired from Dubuque. 
uh, take this job and shove it. Uh, I bet that's another one. I watched uh, some scene sets, some film shooting of that. And then along, you know, fast forward 10 years later, and here comes uh, uh, the Field of Dreams, which obviously we didn't know would become the, the iconic, uh, mythical tourist attraction that it is today. Uh, and, and, and it's so, you know, everywhere I go, I've been to all parts of the country with the Hawkeyes calling games and people find out I'm from Dubuque, uh, they, they know where the Field of Dreams is. They know it's close to Dubuque. They know it's in, in Dyersville, and, and it's uh, it's heartwarming to hear that. <clears throat> but um, as, as for the Field of Dreams itself, uh, I, was, I had just left the television station here in Dubuque at that time and was working full-time at, uh, at U.S. Bank, where I'm, I'm still part-time employed anyway. Uh, and, and so I had a little extra time uh, to, to uh, watch uh, some of the scenes – uh, that were taped, and one of my favorites was, uh, I think it was 17th and Central, as I remember, and, you know, what I didn't realize, a lot of these scenes shot at night were shot in the middle of the night, like at 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. I remember Burt Lancaster, Moonlight Graham's scene where he's walking down uh, Bench or Hill Street, I can't remember, in Galena, with the fog machines going off. They they shot that scene uh, a bunch of times because every time they thought, they, and it was, you know, it was cricket type quiet. And every time they go, oh. almost get done to shoot the scene, a semi would uh, downshift and go up Highway 20, that long hill in downtown Galena, and they'd have to stop and reshoot it again. And, and so that you know, some of the things you don't you don't realize that happens in, in terms of perfecting a movie, and they finally got it shot. But the the one at 17th and Central, I always remember. I'm standing across the street, and this is where uh, Ray Kinsella, Kevin Costner finally tracked down uh, 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 James Earl Jones, uh, the uh, the author, you know, Terrence Mann, yep. uh, in the, uh, like, the third floor apartment in the corner building at 17th and Central and chased him down the stairs and out into the street. And uh, it was just such a thrill to watch two great stars like James Earl Jones and Kevin Costner. Uh, you know, a side story about James Earl Jones, he loved uh, Greyhound racing. He loved to sneak down to Greyhound Park if you remember, well, you won't remember, you're too young, but uh, Greyhound Park was built in 83. The movie was filmed in 89. So James Earl Jones would either sneak into the uh, private section of Greyhound Park uh, to shoot the movie. Uh, that, that was his escape and bet the dogs, or he would call his buddies in Dubuque and have them go bet the dogs for him if he was tied up shooting scenes. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the Highway 20 scene uh, where you've got uh, uh, Born to be Wild, the song playing... Uh, uh, Doobie Brothers, some Doobie Brothers background music, the helicopter shots. You know, there were no drones in those days. It was uh, yeah. all done by helicopter. Those, but but the the beautiful terrain of Dubuque County uh, really stepped uh, front and center. Those are some of the uh, memories I have. Uh, the only other one I had was, uh, you know, we had just seen Kevin Costner in a couple of phenomenal movies that he's made and produced and directed. And so most of the crew stayed at uh, the Galena Territory at Eagle Ridge in the uh, private, you know, rental properties. And and I happen to know the uh, general manager uh, of, of Eagle Ridge at the time. His name was John Osmansky. And I'd sneak over on an afternoon or so, and, and we'd go play a quick 18 holes. And we're on the back side of the uh, of the uh, uh, the original course, the north course, and it's number 12 or number 13. And it's just John and I. It's late in the afternoon, and we're hitting our balls. We we hit our drives on on uh, 12 or 13, and we get to our second shot, and and all of a sudden I hear this, "Hey, John!" And John starts waving to this guy way up on the the bluffs, uh, uh, sitting on on the uh, the on the deck having a beer. And he said, "Here, come on, jump in the car." I said, "Okay." And so we left our balls and our clubs lay in the middle of the fairway, and we drive up to this deck and and go up. He said, "I, I said, who is it?" He said, "I want you to meet Kevin Costner." Well, he's sitting up there in uh, blue jean shorts and a T-shirt and just the most accommodating guy <laughs> you would think a superstar would uh, would be kind of standoffish, but he was not. And he invited us to have a beer, which we did not because we wanted to keep moving in case there were any golfers behind us. But we had about a five, ten-minute conversation uh, with Kevin Costner. And Timothy Busfield was was the same. I did not – I regret I did not get to meet Burt Lancaster, but uh, Ray Liotta, uh, uh, Timothy Busfield – all great people. Uh, th those are some of the lasting memories I'll, I'll take to the grave with me on Field of Dreams. Yeah, that's incredible. I, I can't imagine the atmosphere at that time uh, in the area. But as you said, no one really knew the impact. 
film and, and how big it was going to be. Um, Fist hadn't taken off like everyone thought it would in the area, and, you know, a lot of hopes, people were cautiously optimistic about the film and, and things like that, and it just took off. And, yeah, Kevin Costner was one of those, I'm sure, back in the day that had that aura, you knew he was going to be big. I mean, at that time, you know, when he was filming in the area, he was actually working on the script for Dances with Wolves. So yeah, Dances with Wolves and then the... Yeah, the Untouchables later on. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't have the list of Kevin Costner credits in front of me, but uh, the guy is uh, an award-winning producer and director, uh, Academy Award winner, if I remember correctly. And yep. uh, but you know, uh, uh, Amy Madigan uh, uh, was was an established star in my view at that time. Uh, Burt Lancaster obviously is an icon, along with uh, James Earl Jones. But uh, guys like Ray Liotta uh, and, and uh, Gabby Hoffman, the daughter, who, you know, they were still uh, carving their – or getting a, a foothold with their careers, and it's been fun. Timothy Busfield has been a, a ton of uh, big-time movies down yep. through the years. And the other, the other component for me was uh, seeing all the local extras that I knew uh, well and to this day call friends – uh, Paul Hemmer, uh, there's that scene where they go to the uh, the high school gymnasium where they're arguing whether this Terrence Mann book should be on the shelves for the kids. Yes. Paul Paul Hemmer, <laughs> Paul Hemmer, who was a longtime well-known morning radio host here in Dubuque, uh, uh, was you know holding his wife back at the time and grabbing onto Amy Madigan, as I remember. <laughs> she was going to go up and punch uh, one of the protesters. And, uh, that, that's a scene I remember because of Paul. But then uh, when you get to the what is today still the Ghost Players, uh, these were established baseball stars from all the great town teams. I think that was one of the draws to uh, ultimately uh, building the park here is that uh, and I can remember one of the assistant producers. I don't. I don't remember his name, saying that you know it's amazing that Holy Cross and Farley and Cascade and Dyersville and Bernard and Bellevue and uh, you know I'm gonna, uh, Worthington, uh, all these little wonderful agricultural-based towns, have uh, annual uh, semi-pro tournaments every summer. You know the lights are shining into the night sky in July and June and in August. And I said, hey, that's been going on for. Over a hundred years, and so that was that was the aura of the draw. I think I think that really convinced the folks in Hollywood that, that this this movie should be filmed here, and it had a lot to do with, you know, the Paul Shermans and, and the Dale Pills and Frank Dardis and Jimmy Doty and Mike Hodge, and I'm trying to remember uh, uh, Hank Lucas from Up Holy Crossway yep. and Terry Kelleher, who was a great high school player here in Dubuque, along with Doty and Hodge and others. All those guys involved in the film, uh, uh, you know, to the older generation of a, a Gene Tiny Potts, who was a great player at, uh, at Loris College. So it was, it was a lot of fun to see guys that you call your friends on the big screen. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know a lot of the Ghost players. They're a great group of guys. i got to give a shout-out to Frank Dardis as well. Um, I went to school at Loris, so he's a fellow Dewhawk and Hall of Fame uh, baseball player there. A bunch of great guys, and it's it's cool to see that uh, legacy still live on for them. 30 years later, they're still coming out of the corner. Well, yeah, and let's not lose sight of the fact that uh, uh, baseball, is, it, it's still, uh, no matter, and, you know, and I, I like the NHL and the NBA and, uh, you know, the NFL, and obviously I love college football and basketball, but baseball is still America's game. It's still America's yep. family game. It's still the affordable game. Uh, I can remember doing the Dubuque Packers in the Midwest League in the, in the mid to late 70s and watching these young guys uh, coming up through the ranks of, I think we had the Houston Astros and Texas Rangers and, and uh, uh, a couple of other pool teams where several major league teams would provide talent as Dubuque's uh, uh, professional baseball team was dying out because of the lack of facilities. Yep. Uh, it, you know, it's just, I mean, you'd, you'd go down there some nights, uh, cold, rainy weather, there'd be 150 people there, and you'd have nickel beer night, nickel hot dog night. And then you go to all the town team tournaments uh, in the summertime, and it's really uh, it, it's really a unifying force, particularly in small-town America. And that's why you got you got to love baseball. I mean, it, it, it's, it's uh, second to none. Yeah, and that's the thing. A lot of people from this area don't realize how prevalent baseball is, and, and – big role it plays in Iowa's history and let alone Dyersville and Dyersville is not the only small town in farm country you know they're like you said everywhere across the United States the one constant kind of like James Earl Jones says taking his words the one constant Ray is baseball Baseball. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that's why that's why I'm so excited to be out there. Uh, you know, you know uh, Father's Day weekend, Saturday night, at the Field of Dreams to you know flip that microphone on and uh, uh, have a, have a chance to introduce some of the uh, great athletes that uh, I've not only covered in my broadcast career, but also uh, have become good friends with uh, um, you know football and basketball. You've done a great job lining up a terrific group of celebrities, and I'm also anxious to. Uh, meet some of the major leaguers, uh, for the, for the former major league greats, for the first time. You know, I've 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 had uh, the the sheer thrill in my career of interviewing guys like Mickey Mantle and and Ted Williams and and other great stars. I met Wade Boggs when he first got involved with with the field, and uh, Reggie Jackson shook his hand uh, one of the years he was here. Reggie's been a kind of a regular. Uh, so yep. it's going to be a real thrill for me uh, to come to the field. Uh, I've been, I mean, uh, I, I'm I'm a Sunday morning uh, fill the thermos with coffee kind of guy and just go out for a long drive on the back roads of Dubuque County, uh, Jackson County, Clayton County, Delaware County. Uh, that's what I, that's my re- escape. And uh, probably 50 times over the years, I've, I've stopped at the Field of Dreams when there wasn't a soul there early in the morning. Just got out and leaned on my car and sipped a cup of coffee and just uh, gazed at the the incredible landscape that we were so blessed with around here. The you know the uh, the Holstein cows grazing in the field or the hogs uh, making noise or just listening to the robins uh, and the cardinals chirping. Uh, it, it's just uh, we don't do enough of that uh, today. But yeah. it's going to be a great weekend out there in June. Yeah, we're really excited. We have such a great lineup. For our Iowa Dream Team, we've got stars like Mike Boddicker, former Orioles pitcher, part of the 1983 World Series champion team, Baltimore Orioles, uh, Adam Haluska, Greg Bruner, Jeff Horner, former Hawkeyes that you have had the chance to broadcast uh, and call games on. We've got Dallas Clark uh, commit, and he is in. So just a great lineup of guys. Dwyer Brown's going to be on the team as well. Uh, he's on site who played John Kinsella. So kind of touching base on some of the former Hawk guys, you've had the chance to call a lot of their games as you touched on and, and know them on a personal note as well. Any particular memories stick out? Any games you've called of them that, that stick out? Oh, certainly. Uh, I remember uh, you mentioned two or three of them uh, uh, in basketball. I'll start there. Uh, Jeff Horner, uh, there's so many memories of Jeff Horner. Uh, uh, Jordan Bohannon will pass Jeff Horner next season in the most uh, career three-point goals sunk. Yep. But that doesn't begin to speak about Jeff Horner's uh, game. I don't know, uh, 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 Roman, that there was ever a tougher guy with the basketball in his hands. Maybe Matt Gatons. I would have to say that Gator and uh, Horner were two of a kind. Uh, but with the game on the line, I remember, uh, I think it was three overtimes at Indiana, which, as you know, is not an easy place to... To, to play, let alone win a game at Assembly Hall, you know they think they invented the game of basketball down there. Bob Knight, yeah. <laughs> Bob Knight taught him well, and and for the most part, uh, the, you know Hoosiers was filmed in Indiana for a reason. But yeah. Jeff Horner wanted the ball in his hands uh, in big moments, and he'd hit shots, he'd drive to the paint, kick it to a guy like Haluska or Greg Bruner. Uh, who would go up for the dunk? Uh, th- that's who Jeff Horner was, and that's why he's coaching uh, at the, at the major college level, uh, Truman State t- today. Greg Bruner, I remember calling his uh, record-setting uh, career uh, rebound that he grabbed nine hundred and I think it was seventy-five or, or his last rebound, and in fact he broke Kevin Kunert's uh, rebounding record. Kevin Kunert, who was such a great player at Iowa and at uh, Walmart High School. Now, I tell people uh, that it was somewhat of an asterisk, although I never do that to Brew. Uh, you know, here's Bruner, six foot seven. Kuhnert was seven foot two. Uh, Kevin Kuhnert had 930-some rebounds in three years. His freshmen were ineligible. Then. Greg Bruner, it took him four years to break his record. So I, I, I look at 1A and 1B there in terms of all-time leading rebounders. And Adam Haluska was, was, uh, was without question uh, the most athletic basketball player that I've ever covered at Iowa. He was a state sprint champion, hurdles champion. The guy was a phenomenal high school football player uh, and, and obviously an all-Big Ten, all-American basketball player who uh, drafted in the second round of the NBA draft and lasted a number of years uh, in professional basketball. Uh, football, you mentioned uh, Dallas Clark. I mean, where do you start with Dallas Clark? Yeah. Uh, uh, to me, to me, nothing will ever top the uh, – Again, another fourth and goal, no timeouts left. Brad Banks on a play fake rolls to the wide side of the field. All of a sudden stops and pop flies 
the ball over Dallas Clark's right shoulder. So he's looking back. He twisted his body almost 180 degrees to look back, catch the ball in in the sun, and then trot into the end zone uh, with uh, 30 seconds to go in the game, which was a, a difference maker uh, uh, in their season because the Hawks ultimately went to the Orange Bowl, but they had to beat Purdue at Kinnick Stadium to do that. Uh, so I, you're right. You, you've got not only uh, great athletes coming to this event, but class citizens. They're all uh, got, uh, on average, uh, two to four to five kids now. Uh, I don't think Jeff Horner does yet. He might have one. Uh, Jeff got married uh, a little later than the other guys. But they're class citizens, and they're wonderful fathers and, and, and great families. And that's why, you know, Father's Day weekend, what better place to come than the Field of Dreams? Yeah, I mean, reaching out to these guys, they're very humble. And, you know, Tim Dwight's going to be out um, you know, another Hawkeye. So just line up. They're great guys. They're all excited, and it's incredible. Guys like Dallas Clark and the other athletes that we have in this lineup have have said, some of the players say this is a bucket list item. So even to hear, you know, all of the experiences they've had over the years and still refer to the dreams that, you know, a bucket list destination is pretty cool. It, it just shows how, and how popular the site is how it touches everyone, all walks of life. Couldn't say it any better, Roman. Yeah, so we got a lot going on on June 15th. It's going to be a great day. We have local food vendors on site. We've got live music from David Minahan and Bo Timmerman. We've got face painting and inflatables for the kids, 50% off home tours, a game under the lights, which is going to be fantastic between the ghost players coming out 30 years later after the film and the Iowa Dream Team, you're going to be broadcasting and calling that game. There's a lot going on, a lot of fun activities. Anything in particular you're most excited about? I don't know how you could uh, pick <laughs> out one think. thing with, with all the activity. You know, I, I grew up in Cascade, and uh, you know, I'm a big history buff. Uh, you know, Red Faber, a baseball Hall of Famer with the White Sox, back from the Shoeless Joe era. Uh, is uh, one of our heroes uh, in Cascade. Dyersville's a great baseball town. So I'm a big history buff. I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, in, uh, I am in the here and now, but, uh, you know, my, my escape in the off season is military history and in particular uh, emphasis on the Civil War. So I've been to every major battlefield, every major theater uh, fought in the Civil, uh, Civil War. And, I, and baseball, to me, is about history. That's what I'm going to take out of the June 15th. 30th anniversary celebration, just kind of taking it all in. Uh, you know, if I doze off uh, daydreaming about baseball uh, when I'm supposed to be on the public address, Mike, I'm going to uh, uh, trust you to, you know, shock me or punch me in the nose I'll or something. Throw a hey, you're, <laughs> yeah, throw a baseball. <laughs> Maybe Dwyer will throw a baseball. But, yeah. but, you know, my dad my dad died at, at a real young age. He died of heart disease at age 36. And so I always get a little choked up at the end of the movie when. Uh, when Kevin and uh, Dwyer Brown are playing catch, uh, you know, I just urge, uh, uh, you know, I know one of your questions was uh, uh, if there's one message fans need to take away from the field of dreams, what would it yeah. be? Well, of all weekends, go have, if your dad is still here, go have a catch with your dad. Go throw the ball around the yard with the grandkids uh, and make sure grandpa or dad are involved. And uh, you know, we have one son, he's a police officer and that's not an easy job. And uh, I certainly don't spend enough time with him uh, with my travel schedule. And, but he's got three kids, including a little boy. And so I'm, I'm hopeful they can get out there that weekend. And uh, maybe he and I will play catch. That is fantastic. And one thing that the Ghost players, we have our Ghost Sunday shows throughout the summer every season from Independence Day weekend every other Sunday through Labor Day weekend. And they preach at the beginning of their show uh, three words, take the time. And it couldn't be better said than that. It's one of life's simplest lessons, but uh, hardest to abide by and follow. So you, you well, hit it right and, on the head. Yeah, and as wonderful as the Internet and social media and our millennials, and uh, I'm guilty of it, uh, as you are, uh, we're staring at that phone way too much. Uh, th this is the perfect complement to that this weekend. Uh, slow down, take a deep breath, put the phone away for a few hours, come on out to the Field of Dreams, uh, play catch, just just saunter around, uh, uh, or, you know, grab your cup of coffee and walk off to a deep cavernous uh, uh, ravine uh, of the area of the pasture. Don't be trespassing, of course, but uh, just take a <laughs> moment to listen to the birds, 
and hear the ball on the crack of the bat. Uh, it, it's I know it sounds uh, kind of hokey, but uh, we need to get back to more atmospheres like that. Yeah, it's so simple, but that's why it's so beautiful and why so many people relate to the field. It's tranquil, and there's a spiritual air to the field that people just relate to and, and want to escape. So we're definitely excited uh, to have you on, Gary, and I look forward to seeing you on June 15th. Thanks for your time. You bet, Roman. Thank you for uh, thank you for the chance to talk about uh, the great game of baseball. And uh, happy Father's Day a little bit in advance to everybody. Thanks, Gary. And there you have it, my interview with Gary Dolphin, voice of the Iowa Hawkeyes and the announcer for our game under the lights on June 15th, Saturday, for our 30th anniversary celebration against the Ghost Players and the Iowa Dream Team. Very excited about that, and we couldn't have found a better broadcaster for the game. Excited to have him aboard. He's a class act, isn't he? It was a great interview. I had fun doing it, and uh, he's a great guy. So, speaking of which, though, let me dive right in here. Have to go and do our little spiel. We're just excited. We can't hold it in. Uh, June 15th, going to be a great day, a day-long event with gates opening at 1030 in the morning. We have all kinds of festivities that will be included with the price of your general admission tickets, which you can get at our website, fieldofdreamsmoviesite.com. Face painting, inflatables, 50% off home tours will be provided. Food vendors will be on site. There are going to be sponsors on site with a bunch of free giveaways and swag as well. We're going to have 30th anniversary gear. It's just going to be a great day. Live music and featuring Iowa. Putting the spotlight on the heavenly atmosphere and heavenly state of Iowa. Is this heaven? Yes, it is in Iowa. And we can't wait to show you on June 15th. So come on out, bring the kids, bring the parents, uh, bring all of your family out for this great day, especially your dad's Father's Day weekend. Got to play a little catch on the field. Of course, we fit that in there. There's going to be a, a small slot there in the afternoon for all fans to enjoy the field for themselves and get out there and play a little catch, followed by an unveiling of Denise Stillman's memorial. She was the chief preservationist and former CEO of Go the Distance Baseball, the company that currently owns the Field of Dreams movie site and had an incredible vision and passion for the field. And we're going to remember her and honor her spirit that day she will be with us, smiling down. Hopefully the weather holds out and uh, she can she can do something about the weather. But we will unveil her memorial plaque where she will be able to watch out over the field for years to come. And fans can really appreciate what she has done and, and uh, see her plaque and, and learn about her for years to come. So definitely excited about that. And the game under the lights at 7 o'clock. And, of course, followed by a showing of the film in the outfield. So that's all just one day, folks. And it's a very affordable price of $10 a person. And 14 and under are in free. So definitely get your tickets now. They are going fast. And we have VIP tickets as well for you to have a meal with some of the stars that are going to be on site. We said during the interview, and I said at the beginning of the show, Dallas Clark, Jeff Horner, Greg Bruner, Adam Haluska, Nick Collison, Tyler Lorenzen, Tim Dwight, Mike Boddicker, just name after name of these former professional athletes, whether it be NBA, NFL, MLB, and it's going to be a great day. Dwyer Brown going to be in attendance all day signing his book, If You Build It, written in 2014, and he's excited to come out. So, Great day featuring Iowa. Please come out and join us for that incredible event. Speaking of incredible events, we have another one. Completely different tone, but this is so much bigger than the game of baseball. Come on out for Saturday, June 1st, Military Appreciation Day to honor those that have laid it all on the line for us and salute the troops, both active duty and retired military members of the United States Armed Forces. So a great day. That day starts at 11, gates open, and we will have 50% off home tours as well. Tickets available that day 
for those home tours. We will have inflatables for the kids, live music from great acts like Joseph Wooten of the Steve Miller Band. That's right, the Hall of Fame Steve Miller Band. Joseph Wooten will be there from the Steve Miller Band. J.P. Black Klein is a startup artist, country singer out of Nashville, singer-songwriter. Definitely excited to have her out. And local boy David Minahan will be out as well. So going to be some great music there. Don't want to miss that. Local food vendors as well. Get your taste to Iowa. And get ready for some baseball. We're going to have two games that day. We're going to have a game against two 15U teams from the metro chicagoland area so definitely a great game there in the afternoon the first game of a double header and the second game at seven o'clock under the lights will be between the military team and the civilian team and the military team will be made up of current uh, military members and special forces troops so that'll be great and then the civilian team The great news, guys, you have your chance, the Dreamers, to make your dreams come true here at the Field of Dreams and play an organized game at the field and uh, will definitely be a great memory that will last a lifetime. So don't want to miss that. If you want more details on that, you can go ahead and reach out to us at info at fodmoviesite.com that is our email address just go ahead email us there and we will give you more details on that again email us at info at fodmoviesite.com and if you'd like to purchase tickets for the event in general they're just eight dollars a person that's right eight bucks a pop and five and under get in free along with all active and retired military members will also get in free upon showing their military ID or American Legion ID. So definitely want to show up for this great day. It doesn't get any more American than that, right? Popcorn, a hot dog at the ballpark in the middle of a cornfield and uh, celebrating our troops. So Definitely a great patriotic day. Very excited. The American Legion is involved. Post 137 from Dyersville, Iowa is going to be involved. So definitely a great day there. And uh, we're proud to feature veterans and active duty soldiers of the United States, armed forces from all over the country. We definitely anticipate a great attendance and are excited to share that with you. So come out, celebrate our great field and our great country. On another note, the MLB season is already a month underway. Hard to believe it just feels like yesterday the season started and boom, it just takes off. That's how it happens. But I am a Chicago Cubs fan. Um, I swore I would never release that bias here on this show, but I have to. I I bleed cubby blue and uh, definitely proud of them. They're hot right now, and uh, Javi Baez is is on fire right now, El Mago, but Christian Yelich for those Brewers is red hot as well, putting up a record uh, pace before May 1st for home runs, uh, most up to that point in the season in Major League Baseball history, so surpassing McGuire and everybody. Plenty of the season left to be played, though, and I can't wait to see how the NL Central shapes up and the rest of the divisions in the National League and throughout the league. So it'll be great. Just glad it's baseball season, man. Well, I digress. I guess we have to end this show now. I'm going to let you go off and enjoy the rest of your Friday. This has been another episode of the Dream Nation show. I'm your host, Roman Weinberg of the Field of Dreams movie site. And thanks for joining us. Hope you're enjoying the show. It's been episode five already. This was the fifth one. It's hard to believe. Um, If you like what you hear, be on the lookout. We're going to be on more podcast channels like Apple Podcasts and Stitcher soon coming up. So be on the lookout for that. We will release it on social media when that is available. So be on the lookout. In the meantime, enjoy your weekend. And dreamers, keep dreaming.